Hello everyone, so welcome to this video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the 13th lesson, Atmosphere. Now, let us start off with the lesson. First and foremost, before anything, there are some terms we must identify. So what are these terms? The first term is Atmosphere. Now, when you look over here, you can see the Earth. It's a part of the Earth. And over here, we can see there is some sort of a thin layer of gas. We can see a thin layer of gas here. So, the atmosphere is basically this thin layer of gas. And it's something around 700 kilometers tall coming from the Earth's surface. So, atmosphere is that. The next term we must identify and keep in mind is atmospheric pressure. So, now when we stand on the Earth, there is a certain pressure acting on us. And it is basically the weight of gases. And we call this atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is measured in a unit called millibars. And the symbol is simple m and simple b. So what is so important about the atmospheric pressure? Well, atmospheric pressure is very important because it is used to forecast the weather. Keeping that in mind, let us move to the next technical term, which is altitude. So, what do you mean by altitude? In simple, altitude is the height of a certain place from the sea level. As you can see, this is the sea. From the sea level, a certain height. And that is what we call altitude. Okay, now keeping those in mind, let us move on to the next part of the lesson. Over here, we must understand that the atmosphere can be divided into five layers based on the pressure, based on the pressure and the temperature changes. Based on the pressure and the temperature, we can divide the atmosphere into five layers. The first layer is called the troposphere. The second layer is called the stratosphere. The third layer is called the mesosphere. The fourth layer is called the thermosphere. And the fifth layer is called the exosphere. Now we are going to study each one of these in a little more deep manner. To start this off, we are going to talk about the very first layer that is the troposphere. Now this is the lowest layer we get in the atmosphere. Near the equator, it spreads up to 15 kilometers from the sea level and near the poles which is the north or south pole it is about 8 kilometers. Here 75 percent of air is in this atmosphere is in the troposphere and also we can find water vapor and also dust particles in this layer. All the types of weather changes takes place in this layer. And aeroplanes, hot air balloons, parachutes, helicopters, they all fly through this layer.
and next we have our second layer which is the stratosphere this is 15 to 50 kilometers high from the sea level here we have air that is quite dry because a very little water vapor is present in this air. You don't find any storms or turbulences in this layer. Therefore, we can see jets flying through this layer. And at the same time, you will find this ozone layer in the stratosphere. And this ozone layer, why is it so important? It's important because it prevents UV rays ultraviolet rays which are harmful to us from entering the earth's surface so it simply acts as a shield and protects us from harmful uv rays and over here in this stratosphere you can also see certain clouds like the cumulonimbus so this cumulonimbus has a shape of an anvil it has a shape of an anvil and as winds blow to one direction it has this anvil shape you can see rains with thundering and lightning from these types of clouds like the cumulonimbus now let us take a look at some of these clouds so here are some very commonly seen clouds you get so many clouds but we are here to talk about cumulonimbus which is this cloud and you can see this is basically its shape besides that you get so many more clouds you can see one over here another one here some more here another set of clouds here so they all have their own names which I won't be talking about here because it's not essential just remember that cumulonimbus is present in this layer and we can expect lightning and thundering from this. Moving on, we are coming to the next layer which is the third layer and it's called the mesosphere. Now this is 50 to 80 kilometers up from the sea level and it is the coldest layer. It is the coldest layer among all the five layers. Why you may ask? Because water vapor gets frozen into ice clouds here. The water vapor, water vapor is frozen. So ice clouds are seen during the night time when the rays of sun falls on these clouds when the sun sets so while the sun is setting the rays will fall on these clouds and then we can see these frozen clouds with that we are going to the next layer which is the fourth layer that is this layer the thermosphere now this thermosphere is quite fascinating and it extends up to 80 to 120 kilometers up from the sea level here the temperature is very high because air particles in this layer absorbs the sun's rays. So here it's quite high. In the mesosphere it was cold. Here it was cold. Here it's hot. Now over here we can see things like sat these satellites and also things like this international space station. And a beautiful thing about this layer is we can see two types of sceneries which are called auroras here you can see this is also a certain beautiful phenomenon that takes place here there are two types of auroras the first one is aurora borealis and the other is aurora australis so aurora borealis is seen near the northern part it's seen near the northern pole aurora australis is seen near the southern pole so those are quite significant figures and here you can see them over here you can see aurora borealis 
and here it's a small figure of it and then Aurora Australis in the South Pole and this is how it looks they are quite beautiful sceneries and very magnificent next up we are coming to the last layer that is the exosphere the fifth and final layer for you all to learn that is the exosphere this is the thinnest layer in the atmosphere it's the thinnest layer in the atmosphere and it is 120 kilometers high from the sea level there is no certain boundary between exosphere and space now here you can simply see that um, for easiness and stuff they have simply divided it but there is no such boundary between the exosphere and the space so what happens to the temperature and the pressure when you go up these layers of the atmosphere so what you must understand is as the altitude as altitude increases pressure and temperature decreases as we go high the temperature and pressure decreases now keeping that in mind we can plot a graph to represent this so over here you can see the temperature and this is zero here you get 17 degrees celsius so basically as you go to this side the temperature increases and here it's zero over here you can see the height is zero and then it keeps on increasing 50 80 so as you go up the height increases now let us see how to read this graph first let's consider this first layer which is the troposphere here we can see that temperature is decreasing with the increase in height here the height increases from 0 to 15 and then we can see that the temperature is somewhere here and it is going towards zero so temperature decreases here from a higher value it's moving to this side to a lower value therefore the temperature decreases so you may ask why does this happen really so the answer is this the land and the sea gets heated from the sun's heat so the temperature near the land gets high. The temperature of the troposphere gradually decreases away from the land. So that is the reason for this special phenomenon here. Then as we go higher we get the stratosphere. So stratosphere the height in kilometers from sea level increase from 15 to 50. So here we can see that the temperature goes to this side so that means from a lower value it's going to a higher value which is to this side therefore we can tell that the temperature increases as the height increases here, here we can say temperature increases as the height increases here the temperature decreased as the height increased and I explained to you why that was now in the stratosphere why does this thing happen you may ask so this happens because there is the ozone layer we find the ozone layer in the stratosphere therefore this ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet rays of the sun then the stratosphere gets heated and the temperature increases so that is the reason why here the temperature is high then when we go up when the height increases more in the mesosphere the temperature moves from a higher value to a lower value so over here what you must understand is temperature decreases from the bottom to the top so from bottom it's here bottom to top 
temperature decreases because it goes like this. Why is this? Now we must understand that there is very less amount of ozone gas to absorb sun's ultraviolet rays in this layer. The lowest temperature is recorded in the top of the mesosphere which is something around minus 90 degrees Celsius. This temperature is less than the temperature in the Antarctic which has the lowest temperature on the earth. So that is why the mesosphere, the temperature decreases as the height increases. Then we are moving on to the next layer which is the thermosphere. Here we can see as the height increases, temperature moves from a lower value as you can see, lower value to a higher value from somewhere like here to here. So since it moves to a higher value, here the temperature increases as the height increases. Why is that? In simple terms, the air particles in this layer absorb sun heat at a higher rate. That's why here the temperature is very high. Now keeping this in mind, we must understand a very important fact that is the temperature temperature this is quite important temperature increases more and more when we get closer to the exosphere the more we get closer to the exosphere the more the temperature increases because now over here it only increased something this amount. But here, the more close it is to the exosphere, it has increased greatly. So that is quite important. Now, this graph is available in your textbook. I suggest you all take your textbook, turn to the relevant page, and just go through this graph. Everything I said is here on the screen right at this very moment. So if you want to know more or if you get a clear understanding about it, you can do some self-evaluation and try to read out and understand the graph and you can pause this video and check, okay, have I done it properly? Because here you can see everything that I just explained. Now we have successfully completed the first part of this lesson. I will be uploading the second part quite soon, so subscribe and stay tuned with my lesson and hope you all understood the lesson and if you all did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and share this content with your friends. So until next time, bye.